This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create these vector progress slider bars using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So let me minimize this and we'll get started here in Inkscape. And by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons over here on the left, I will have a link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we're going to do is set the view. Well, we'll make sure that the view is set to custom. And then we're going to zoom in at a ratio of one to one. And then we're going to open up our Align and Distribute menu. And we want to make sure we have less selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button right there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle that's going to represent this progress bar right here, this colored bar. So let's grab the Squares and Rectangles tool and let's just click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle like that. And once we've created our rectangle, we're going to take this little circle node here at the top and just click and drag that all the way down so it gives it a rounded edge. And then we could finalize that by converting it to a path. We can go to Path object to path. And what we're going to do now is turn this 90% gray. And if you hover your cursor over the shade of gray over here to the left, it'll show you what percentage it is. So we're going to turn that 90% gray. And then under the fill tab up here, we're going to give this a linear gradient by clicking on the button that says linear gradient. And what we'll do is we'll take this top node right here. I mean this right node and put this to the top. And then we'll take this left node and put this to the bottom. And once we get down to the bottom, we can just hold control on the keyboard so it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. We can put it down there like that. And then we'll take this node right here and we're going to bring the opacity of that all the way up. And under the HSL tab, we're going to come over to the L column and slide that to the right a little bit just to make that a little lighter. Maybe about that much. That's pretty good. And the next thing we will do is um, let's go to Path linked offset. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a little bit of a bevel going around the outside here. You notice there's a little bit of a, a bevel going around the outside. So how we're going to create that is we'll go to path. Uh, let me go back. Let me click on that. We'll go to path link to offset. And there's going to be this little node that shows up here. But before we do that, we want to flip this thing vertically so the gradient is going the opposite way. So instead of going back to the Select tool and clicking on Flip Vertically, we could just use the keyboard shortcut, which is V. So press V on the keyboard, and it will flip it vertically. And you'll see that node is now down here. And once you've done that, we could take this node and just pull this out a little bit until we have a little bit of a bevel there like that. Maybe a little further. Uh, and that's pretty good. And then we can finalize that by going to Path, Object to Path. And then we go back to our Select tool. And what we'll do now is let's go to our Squares and Rectangles tool and let's just create a big rectangle going over the background here. Let's go to the Select tool. Uh, actually, let's go back to the Rectangles tool. Let's give that sharp corners by clicking on this button. And then we can go back to the Select tool, lower this to the bottom. And I'm going to come over to the L column and slide this to the left just a little bit just to make this a little darker. Maybe about that much. And that's pretty good right there. So what we'll do next is let's click on this uh, center rectangle right here. And we're going to make this the color that we want this to be. For this one, I just used uh, different gradients here. I'll, for this one, I'll use a gradient of yellow. I'll start with this FFCC00 yellow shade. And I'll give that a linear gradient by clicking on that button. And we're going to press G on the keyboard to get our gradient tool. And I'm going to click on this stop right here on the right. And I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up. And I'll come down here to the color picker and I'm going to choose a shade of pink to make that. That's pretty good. And then we could take this pink stop and put this at the bottom. And take this yellow stop and put this to the right. And once you get up there, just hold control so it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. And that line goes straight up. And then we go back to the Select tool. And what we're going to do now is we're going to right click that shape and go to Duplicate. And let's make this white. We'll come down here to the Color Picker. We'll find white. And then hold Control on the keyboard and grab this arrow in the center right and just scale it down about that much. And I'm going to hold Control and just move this over. I'm going to move this in a little bit. And then hold Control again and move it up a little bit. And this is going to make for that little reflection of light that we see here. So once we have that positioned right about there, we can go to the Select tool, uh, I mean the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and click and drag over those three nodes on the right. 
and then hold control and just click and drag this all the way over to the other side like that. And we go back to our select tool and we could hold shift and click on the uh, yellow slash pink shape and then click on the, uh, the button that says center on vertical axis just to make sure it's centered. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything and then click on just this stop right here. I mean, just this, uh, this white shape right here and bring the opacity down um, to about, I don't know, about 65, whatever you think looks good. I'm gonna leave that right about there, that looks all right. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. And the next thing I'm going to do is create these little diagonal lines that you see going through the stripe right there. So um, to do that, we'll grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'm just gonna click and drag and create a rectangle about that size going through the entire graphic there. And I'm gonna make this green just so I could, oops, I'm just gonna make this green so I could see this compared to uh, the rest of the graphic. And I wanna make sure the opacity is about 50%. That's pretty good. And then we'll go back to the select tool and I'm gonna click on this to get the rotation handles and I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and grab this uh, corner arrow and just rotate this a couple of steps. One, two, like that, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna hold control and just move this over to the right edge, to the left edge right there, right about there. And then I'll hold control, uh, I'll right click that and go to duplicate and then hold control and move this one over to the right, right about there like that. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on this other one. And let's just move this down out of the way for now. And then we'll hold shift and click on this green stripe to deselect it. So we just have this one selected. Then we could right click that and go to duplicate and then hold control and just move this over to the left a little bit. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna duplicate this a bunch more times, but instead of right clicking and going to duplicate, we could just hit control D, which is the keyboard shortcut and then hold control and move the copy out there. Control D, hold control, move this copy out here. And if you want, you could even click and drag over all of those four right there. Control D, hold control, slide this to the left. Click and drag over all of those. Control D, hold control, slide this to the left. And um, I'll click and drag over maybe a few of these right here. Maybe about that much. Control D, hold control, slide this over. And then we'll just click on two of these and then hold shift, click on the other one. Control D to duplicate and then hold control and slide this over here like that. And we have our stripes here now. So we just have to make sure now that they're spaced out evenly. We could do that by clicking and dragging over all of them until you have them all selected like that. And coming down to the uh, distribute panel, we can click on this button that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal. And that'll space them all out evenly. And then we can go to path, Union. So what we're going to do now is let's zoom in on this part right here. And I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard a few times to zoom in. I'll move the page up like this. And by the way, you could press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to move the page around like I'm doing. And what we're going to do now is hold shift and click on this uh, yellow pink shape. And we're going to center, center on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And that'll put our stripes over the object there. And then let's... Um, Let's click this button that says deselect any selected objects. We'll just deselect everything with that button. And then we'll click on this, this yellow object, right click, duplicate, hold shift, click on the green stripes and go to path intersection. And we're gonna lower this one step with this button right here, so lower selection one step. So it goes beneath the white, uh, the white glare right there. And we'll turn this white and bring the opacity down a little bit just so it blends in a little more with the rest of the graphic. And then I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% and click off of it to deselect everything. And the next step would be to uh, help accentuate this bevel a little more by putting an object here and another object there. So to do that, let's zoom in over the left-hand side right here. I'm just gonna press plus on the keyboard a few times. And I'm gonna click on this large uh, dark gray rectangle and then just hit Control D to duplicate that. And I'll turn that black, and then I'll hit Control D again to duplicate it again, but I'll turn this one red. And then hold Control on the keyboard and just take this top copy and click and drag it up a little bit like that. So you see about that much of the black sticking out. And then hold Shift and Alt and click on that red shape again so we have both the black shape and the red shape selected. And go to Path, Difference. 
and there we have our black shape and I'm actually gonna take the opacity and bring that down a little bit it looks a little too uh, a little too harsh and then we could right click this and go to duplicate we could turn that white and we could flip that vertically by clicking the button that says flip selected objects vertically and then hold shift and click on this black shape up here and align the top edges like that and let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% and see how that looks. We can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Uh, the white is a little too harsh, so I'm going to click on that white object. And I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Maybe about that much. And let me just zoom back in over this. Okay, you know what we have to do now? Let's click on this gray shape right here, our original rectangle. And let's flip that vertically. We'll click on Flip Selected Objects Vertically and then press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Click off of it to deselect, and I think that looks a little more natural now. Maybe I'll take that black shape and bring it back up to 100%. Yeah, that looks all right now. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is create a little circle that we could put next to it here um, to indicate like a percentage or what, you know, whatever value you wanna put in there. Uh, to do that, let me zoom in, press plus a few times, and I'm gonna grab this yellow shape right here and the information I want from this shape is actually up here in the H row that says, which stands for height. So let's turn on the lock icon and let's, whatever that number is for you, just highlight it and then hit control C to copy that number. And then we'll, we're gonna create a circle. So let's grab the circles and ellipses tool, hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. We'll go back to the select tool and we're gonna erase whatever number that is in there and hit control V to paste it in there because that's, that's the size we want it to be. And then hold shift and click on the yellow shape and just make sure it's centered on the horizontal axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So let's click on just this circle right here and we'll give that a linear gradient. And we'll go to our drop down and choose the other gradient that we created, the yellow to pink gradient. And I'm just gonna rotate this around 90 degrees clockwise so that the, uh, the gradient's matching the progress bar here. So I'll come over to the icon that says rotate selection 90 degrees clockwise like that. And that's pretty good. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna grab, uh, I'm gonna have to zoom in a little more for this. So let's zoom in a few times. Press plus on the keyboard a few times. Let's click on this gray rectangle right there. Once you have that selected, we wanna copy whatever information this is. So we'll, again, we'll hit control C and we'll come over here to this object. We'll right click that and go to duplicate and we're gonna make this the same height that the other object was. So hit, just hit control V to paste it in, hit enter. And the gradient we'll choose for this one is the same one we used for that other rectangle. And we'll have to flip this vertically and we'll have to lower this one step so it goes beneath that object. Hold shift, click on the yellow circle center it on the vertical and horizontal axis and then we could deselect everything and let me just press minus a few times to zoom out just to get a good view okay I need a little more okay so let's click on this circle right here we'll right click that and go to duplicate we'll turn that black right click the, the black circle duplicate turn that red hold control and click and drag this circle up about that much and then hold control and grab this top arrow and pull that out a little bit like that. And then hold shift and click on the black circle beneath it and go to path difference. And we can right click this, go to duplicate. We could turn that white, flip that vertically. And let's find out what the opacity is for this. This white shape here is 30 at 30% uh, opacity. So we're gonna set this to the same one. So we'll click on this. We'll make this, uh, we'll erase this, we'll make this 30% opacity, then hold shift and click on the gray circle and align the top edges. And we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And there we pretty much have our progress bar. Um, what, I could, what I'm gonna show you now is how to make, how to make the width of this, the, uh, the actual colored bar itself uh, variable. So in order to do that, let's click and drag over all of this. We'll right click that, go to duplicate, hold control and just click and drag this up here for now. And I'm actually gonna click on this gray rectangle and make that a little darker. I don't quite like how light that is. That's pretty good. And then uh, let's zoom in by pressing plus a few times. And I wanna click on the yellow rectangle and then hold shift and click on the white rectangle 
And we'll go to Edit Paths by Nodes. We'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Let me zoom out a few times. And I'm gonna click and drag over all of these nodes here on the right. And then hold Control and click and drag one of these nodes to the left. And you'll see you could change the width of this. So you could put this down here, put it up there, put it up here. I'm just gonna put this one over here for now. Maybe right about there. We'll go back to the Select tool. And what we now have to do is adjust these stripes accordingly. So let's deselect everything and let's click on just the uh, the pink yellow shape right there and we'll hit control D to duplicate that and then hold shift and click on these white stripes and go to path intersection and you can see it now takes the shape and if you want you could even change the color of this you can make this um, like a, a neon green whoops I clicked the wrong thing let me zoom in grab this yellow shape we can make that like a neon green uh, give that a linear gradient press G to get the gradient tool click on that stop bring the opacity up and we'll make this stop blue and I'll just put this stop down here and I'll take this stop and put it up there again holding control so it goes straight up and down like that and we could click on this circle and make that the same gradient by just going to our drop down go to the select tool we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% and again, if you want to create one, if you want to create another one that's maybe like less percentage than this, you can just click and drag over those ones, Control D to duplicate, and hold Control and move it down there, and you can go ahead and create uh, varying widths of the progress bar. So that's how you can create that using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.